I'm here with Kacker, and she has brought these really cool 3D pendants. That's right. They They're really, really just pop out at you. I was going to say, boom, pop. So, mm -hmm. And if we take a peek, it's all different colors, different images. A lot of them are faces, but you'll also have a shell, all sorts of stuff. So right. let's get this party started. Okay, so today we're making the bezels, and I'm going to be using an open back bezel. So I went ahead and An open added... back bezel is just a bezel that doesn't have anything behind right, it, obviously. Right, right. So if you have a closed bezel, you can you don't even need the tape. And so I just added some tape to it, and then I put an, a, a resin piece right in the center there. And so I'm going to go ahead and take two equal parts of uh, casting resin. I've already got one out there, so I'm going to go ahead okay. and pour the second one. And now, casting resins are obviously used, I assume, for making things like this face, which you just said was yeah, cast. Yeah, that's right. You can you can make your own designs and cast pieces. So there you go. And then I'm just going to mix them together. And, and you're just eyeballing the two equal parts. I of am. course, if you used a measuring cup, you could mix sure. them in the same cup instead. And, and as an extra precaution, we're also working on top of a piece of waxed right, paper. Right, right, yep. So now that clear packing tape that's under there, could you use a different kind of tape or does it have to be packing tape? Well, I've only used the packing tape. It's really just to make sure it doesn't spill out on you. And oh, you so see, that's why, because it's sticky. That's right, why you're not putting a piece right. of paper under there. And so I'm using the popsicle stick to kind of guide the resin so that I don't just pour it and then it spills all over the place. And so I'll just let that cure. It's white right now, but when it cures in about 10 minutes, it turns white. I was gonna say, it's clear right now. Right, But right. it's about to turn. It is, it super. turns super white here. Which is how you know it's dry, mm -hmm. I assume. That's right, it's it's rock hard there. And so I'm gonna prepare this surface. It's so uh, cool how it, it looks like it's like Embedded, melting. yeah. And so I'm gonna take some of this steel wool and I'm just gonna scratch it and I'm gonna scratch that, um, rel that relic piece there. Are you worried? There at all about scratching off the features? No, the resin is really hard. It's not going to damage it at all. And so I've, I've used the steel wool and now I'm going to prep the surface with some gesso. And gesso is just a primer that's right. gonna help paint stick later. That's right. And this is a great idea, I was thinking, because I was wondering why you didn't put like dye or something directly into the resin, but this is a great way if you have leftover like pieces and castings and you can get them to meld with something else right. by painting the whole surface at once, it looks like a single piece. That's right, that's right. And so I'll add that layer of gesso and then I'll let it dry and I'll go ahead and add some paint to it. And so I normally like to start, just use two colors and I'll start with the lighter color and then I'll add some of the darker color. And it's really, you know, it's up to you however you wanna go ahead and add the color. And I'll just go ahead and um, put this aside. A lot of times I do like to add um, an additional coat um, just to make those colors really pop. And then I'll put it aside to dry. And that's what it looks like. And so I really wanna kind of bring it up a notch. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some rub-ons um, to it. I will just take a, a rub-on, I'll take a popsicle stick. And rub-ons come, you can get text, you can get images, all you can get all kinds designs. of stuff. And the nice thing about them is they are pretty seamless yes. in terms of how they appear as opposed to like a sticker or anything like that. Right. If you didn't have a rub-on, you could probably draw with a permanent pen, I'm guessing, since oh, it's sure. on top of oh, paint, not all of it that would off. make sense. Whatever uh, embellish you want. And of course, you, you can take a black pen and finish that off. Right, right. Yeah, we don't have a black pen, but if we did, we'd just go ahead and finish that off and it would look a little bit more, That's I think, right. like this one mm -hmm. that you have right here where yep. you finish the dots and the word looks fantastic. That's right. And so to finish it off, I'm gonna go ahead and take some um, clear resin and I do need two equal parts. I've already poured one and so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the other one. Now this one, both halves are more of a sort of similar color than the last one. Yeah. Yeah, and so, you said that that's because this is a clear resin as opposed to a casting resin. That's so it, right. It, you have to sort of know the differences between your resins and what the purposes are for them. That's right, absolutely. And is this just like a finishing touch? It is, it just may, it just really completes the piece. And I'll go ahead and just add it to the top of my uh, pendant. And I like to have a little bit of control, so I'll go ahead and mix it together. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just use the popsicle stick. And normally and just you would mix that for on. about two minutes, right? right? to really right. get it going. Now, are you worried about it slipping off the edge 
of the bezel when you add Not it. Not if I'm using the popsicle stick, or you can also just use a brush, a disposable brush. <gasps> you just dropped a sparkle I there. did, I made it happy, and then I would just cover the whole thing, add a couple of little confetti stars, let it cure, and then it comes out looking like this. And so Super this piece shiny. is just completely finished, and I, I had to add um, a little piece of uh, resin sheet, um, which yeah, we I made. Remember. I was gonna mm -hmm. say, last season, you'll recall, the cat was here, and she showed us how to make these amazing texture sheets out of resin. That's right. And if we look over at some of the finished pieces mm -hmm. that you brought with you, there's just, well, there's just so much you can do. Options. I can see this is a similar painting uh, technique to we use, but right. the one that's there, it's a little bit different. It's got some crackle medium in there, a little bit more aging look. And, and you can also put, do the same exact technique in a shadow box, and you're just pouring the, the resin into the shadow box, and it's the same exact look. So. And I was gonna say, I thought this was a real shell, mm -hmm. and you don't think that it's actually a resin casting. Right, right. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So many possibilities for ways of making 3D art. Right. I love it. Thank, Thank you, you, Kat.